In this quick video, I'll show you how to find the velocity of a mass after it has compressed the spring. So we want to find the rebound speed of the mass the moment the spring stops compressing. The question reads, if a three kilogram block sliding at 12 meters per second along a frictionless surface compresses a spring 0.91 meters, find the velocity with which the block leaves the spring if the spring sits on a surface with a coefficient of friction of 0.25. Now if you've been following along with our videos, this is a continuation of what we did in our previous video. And in our previous video, we learned how to calculate 0.91 meters. Let me redraw an illustration that I showed you in the previous video so that you get an idea of what's happening. So we have a spring, and of course it's connected to a solid surface. Let's represent it as this square. And we had a block of mass that was traveling at 12 meters per second and it had a mass of three kilograms. So of course this holds in it kinetic energy if it's moving at a constant velocity and what it did was it compressed the spring which is sitting on a coefficient of friction of 0 0.25. So the kinetic energy went into two things. It went into compressing the spring and it also went into the work required to overcome the force due to friction. With that being said, we want to know the moment this spring stops compressing, let me redraw it right here, and here it is compressed, we want to know the speed at which this mass, this one right here, which is represented in purple in this illustration, the speed at which it shoots backwards. Let's begin by calculating the amount of work required to compress the spring 0.91 meters. And remember, this is happening twice. It's happening when the mass first touches the spring, and it's happening again when the spring is fully compressed. So whatever we get as our number, we'll multiply it by two. And I'll explain that further in a moment. So the amount of work required to overcome the force due to friction can be calculated using the force times the displacement, which I'll represent as x, and we know that the displacement is 0 0.91, multiply 2 mu, which is the coefficient of friction. Our force is found by taking the mass times the acceleration. The mass is 3 kilograms, and the acceleration is due to gravity. That's 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.91 meters times 0.25. Putting this all into our calculator, we should get 6.6885. 6 decimal 6885. We won't round this just yet, and the units are in joules. Like I said, this is happening twice. The first time it pushes the spring, and then again after the spring pushes that mass. Therefore, we will be multiplying this value by 2. Now, the initial kinetic energy which you learned how to calculate in the first video, the initial kinetic energy will go into two things. It will go into overcoming the force due to friction underneath this spring, the work required to do that, not once but twice. So two times 6.6885. And whatever of that energy is left over will go into the kinetic energy as it's being pushed away. This is called the conservation of energy. What goes in must equal to what goes out. So I'll write down kinetic energy final. Remember that to calculate kinetic energy, we use the formula mv raised to the power of 2 over 2. And this is where we will find our final velocity. So the initial kinetic energy, if you recall, this is a preview of our previous video, 216 joules. So let me just go back to our current video. 216 joules is equal to the product of those two numbers. So that multiplied by two, that's 13.377 joules plus mv squared over two, where m will be replaced with three kilograms. So I have 216 minus 13.377 is equal to 1.5 v squared, 1.5 because three divided by two is 1.5. It's better than writing three over two, I think. 216 minus 13.377. 
And then we divide both sides by 1.5. We get 135. And then we square root both sides, where we get a velocity of 11.6 meters per second. So in case you're confused, we subtracted these. Then we divided both sides by 1.5. And then we square rooted both sides. So that is the final velocity of this mass as it's going that way. And there you have it. That is how to find the velocity of a mass after it has compressed a spring.